G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we've reached part four of my Rhino Inside series. So today we're looking at creating Revit grids. Um, so if you haven't already seen videos in my series, it's worth checking out Rhino Inside and just what it is in part one. Um, but it's essentially a work in progress project um, that lets things like Grasshopper uh, talk to Revit through plugins. So really exciting. Um, so yeah, definitely check out, check out part one if you haven't seen it already, and ideally part two and three. Um, so this series we've covered um, how to take Revit into Rhino and also how to read and set Revit parameters. Uh, but now we're going to look at Revit elements in the next few parts. So this one we're going to look at creating a set of Revit grids. Um, so this is quite a helpful workflow for people using Dynamo as well because it lets you establish a grid or a grid of grids per se. So we're going to look at creating a two-directional grid. And in later uh, parts we're going to look at creating other types of elements such as floors from massing. But today we're focusing on grids. So we're going to create a two-directional grid um, with a nominated offset in the H and the V direction. Um, so a pretty typical workflow, but I thought it's interesting to show you how you can do it in Grasshopper and then also influence Revit. And we're going to place a few columns at all the grid intersections at the end as well using uh, Grasshopper. So in this video, we'll create the polar arrays off the grids. Um, we'll, we'll get the Revit grid type from an existing one, and then we'll set grids by curve, and then we'll put columns at the intersections, all in Revit. Um, so I'll be using Rhino Work in Progress today. I did say I've been using Rhino 6 on past videos, which is incorrect. I've been using Work in Progress, so apologies for the confusion. Um, and I'll be using Revit 2019.2. Um, without further ado, let's get started. So we're just going to jump straight into Revit. Um, I've already booted up Rhino inside, um, and I'm just going to boot up Grasshopper. So we'll just start off by setting up some parameters uh, to establish our grid count. So we're going to create a horizontal grid count, uh, moving sideways, and our vertical count, and also the spacings that they're nominated at. So we'll just say that the H count is between two and we'll set it to five by default up to 15 grids. And I'll just call that uh, H count. This is probably one where you want to be following along at home because it's a, not a super long script, but it's a little bit long. So probably worth following. So I'm just copying that slider and then I'm gonna create a spacing for the grids and I'll just do this between uh, three meters and I'll set it to eight by default and I'll take it up to uh, 15 meters maximum. And we're just going to call this uh, H spacing, or horizontal spacing, and as you can guess, we're going to do the same for vertical spacing as well. Okay. And the last thing that we're going to set up a slider for is our extension of our grids, because we don't want our grid heads to be right on the edge of the grid system. We want them to extend a little bit past by default. So again, we'll just set this one to a slightly smaller value. Let's say we're going to extend them by maybe three meters. And we're just going to call this uh, grid, grid extension. All right, so that's all our parameters. I'm ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the origin point or zero, zero in Revit. So I'm just going to do a X, Y, Z point by coordinate or construct point. Um, so I've, I've constructed a point at the origin. It's a bit hard to see, but it's roughly here on my screen. Um, an easy way to identify a point is just to get a circle by uh, send, uh, center normal radius, or CNR will find it. And then you can just draw this and just set a panel to a meter. And that's a really easy way just to find, um, I guess, where the, the origin of everything is going. So we'll just leave this off to the side so that we don't lose track of where our origin of our grid system is. Because uh, you won't be able to see the grid lines we're creating as curves in floor plan, only in 3D. So we're going to work in 3D predominantly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start the, uh, the H grid first. So we're going to need to push our point away in the opposite of the X vector. Uh, by our grid offset, so or our grid um, extension as we're calling it. So I'm just going to get an X vector, and I'm going to push my horizontal spacing by a grid extension, and essentially we're going to transpose this point. But we're going to do a reverse vector, uh, because we're going backwards. Uh, so what we need to do now is just get a geometry move, and we'll move the origin point by this motion. So essentially, again, if I just do a, a circle CNR, and I'll just do a panel, and I'll just get CNR, you can see that we've set a point to the left, essentially. Um, and what we're going to do now is now we have to create the point in the other direction. So what I'm going to use to do this is I'm going to set up a pretty big expression uh, to create a formula to figure out how far away it is, because the H grid is pretty much dictated by the spacing at the V grid, 
um, in terms of where, where it gets polarized to, but its length is determined by the number of grids. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just get a expression editor. And this is a really helpful node for anyone that doesn't use it. The first thing you wanna do uh, for an expression editor is you wanna set some, some variables. So I'm just gonna make a horizontal spacing, horizontal number, or number of grids, and then we're gonna add a variable. And what we'll do is we'll call this one, um, I'll call it offset, but it's essentially the extension of the grid. We'll open up our expression editor and we'll start writing our expression. So the length of our line is going to be the spacing of the grids times the number of grids plus two times the offset, essentially, um, minus one grid, because essentially we're going spacings between the number of grids. So we're gonna do two times offset, which we've set up as a variable, plus the, the horizontal spacing times, and we'll use brackets just to make sure that all our order, the order of operations is respected. And we'll times that by the horizontal number, take one. And essentially that should create um, our extensions. So we've got a horizontal spacing, a number of horizontal grids and our offset. And you'll see now that this, now this uh, formula is satisfied at this point. And this is essentially the length of our line what we're going to do to that is we're going to move in the x vector direction by that factor. And we're going to move uh, our first point that we just translated to the left um, all the way over to the right. So now we have two points that we can connect. So we can get a start point, end point, or a line uh, by two points. Actually, I'll do line uh, by two points. So our start point is going to be this point we push to the left, and our end point is the one we push to the right. So essentially that is our, our origin grid um, horizontally. So what we're gonna do now is use a array in order to place multiple copies of this element. So we need to create a, I think it's a linear array, I think it's called. I'll just cross check. Looks like I'm freezing up. Linear array, there we go. So we're gonna move this line and we're gonna move it in the V direction instead is we're moving our grid along. I'll just make sure I've got the right, the right thing. So sorry, actually our direction is actually a vector. So what I need to do now is create a Y vector because we're gonna move this grid down. So we're gonna amplify that by our grid spacing in the V direction. So this is our vector. And then we're going to have to reverse this as well because I'm moving down rather than up. So reverse our vector and then move in that direction. And our count is gonna be the number of number of grids in the V direction. What we should have now is a, a set of V grids. So as you can expect, if I change my count, we lose grids. And if I change my spacing, you can see my grids uh, increase or reduce in spacing. So I'll just quickly set that to Let's go five meters so we can see the difference between the V and the H grid. Um, so that's one set of grid lines or grid curves set. We're just gonna do the same for the other end and I'm just gonna copy this whole set of nodes and we're just gonna reconnect all the parameters the other way around essentially. So what we're gonna need to do first is we're gonna need to change our vectors. So our reversed X vector is actually gonna be our Y vector because we're gonna start the end of our grids further up from our origin point. So this is by the offset. I uh, remember. So what we're going to do is just get a, a Y vector instead. And whoops, I'll just hold shift control and reconnect it like this by this motion. And what we need to do now is change our formula here. So we're going to do vertical spacing instead and vertical number of grids and offset. So I'll just go into my formula and do the vertical spacing, vertical number of grids. But the only difference is here that we're, is we're moving down. So we need to translate by negative one. So now we're moving down instead of across. And what we'll do now is just connect up those alternate parameters. So we have our vertical spacing, our vertical count. And once we fix up these translated points, um, it'll all start making sense. So we need to translate in the Y direction in this case. Oops. 
So instead of the x direction, we're going to move down in the y direction. And there you go. Now you can see we have basically the opposite instead. So what we need to do now is take this line and we're going to be creating a polar array uh, or a linear array, but we're going to do it in the x direction instead this time. And we don't need to reverse it this time either. So our direction. And in this case, our factor will be our other spacing. So our H spacing. There we go. And I think the only thing that isn't correct is currently our length isn't correct. So I'll just double check why that is. Okay, it looks like I might just quickly refresh because sometimes, sometimes it needs to refresh. No, okay, I've done something wrong. I think I just need to update the offset in this case. Vertical spacing, vertical number. Sometimes if you're not sure where your points are, again, the circle by normal radius is quite helpful when you're trying to see your point from Rhino into Revit. So I'll just take uh, my point and see where my end point ends up. Bear with me. All right, so it actually is not quite right at the moment. I'll just cross check that I'm moving in the right direction. Two by offset. Probably just need to review my formula in this case. Ah, okay. I've actually missed out a set of brackets. That's why. I need to enclose this all before I times it by negative one. All that's happening is this section was being multiplied by negative one um, instead of the overall number. There we go. So now we have a set of grids um, in two directions, essentially. So I can just delete that circle by normal radius. Okay, um, so these essentially are going to become our grids in Revit when we create them. And we can just increase the number of them, change their spacing, and likewise, we can do it in the other direction as well. Interesting, look like I've still, still got one thing wrong. So I think I've got a uh, an, an array count incorrect here. Yeah, so I've got to connect up the H count to the V grid. There we go. So now we have our grid curves ready. So essentially we're aiming for a, a node in this under datum called add grid by curve. So what it needs is a curve. It needs a grid type and it needs a grid uh, name. So we need to establish our names now because currently we don't have a list of names for our grids. So we're going to use alphabetical grids for our um, vertical grids and numerical grids for our horizontal ones. So we're just going to create a, a domain first. So we'll construct domain. So we're going to create a numerical domain. I'm going to set the number at the bottom to one and the number at the end will be our V grid count. So I'll just go back and connect this up to V count. So this is the, the domain of our grids essentially. So one through two seven. Uh, but I need to create a sequence now. So I'm going to use a a range with this as my domain and my steps. In this case, are going to be hmm the number of steps we need. I think will be. A subtraction formula and it will be the number of hmm let's figure this one out really quick I think it's the the V count uh, minus one for the number of items between so we'll just right click here set this to one and now we should end up with a range that is our numerical grids uh, but we need to round this because you can see a couple of the numbers are giving us a, a decimal which we don't want. So we'll just use a nearest round. So what this should give us is a list of numerical grid numbers uh, for our horizontal grid. Um, our alphabetical grids are actually a lot easier. Um, all we need to do for this is use an alpha sequence or a character sequence, uh, which I think should be located under set, um, under sequence. Okay, so this one, all you need to do is actually just connect up your H grid count uh, to the number of letters you want. And it starts with a capital A and just goes up from there. So um, pretty easy, actually. Oops, just went right past my script. 
So now we should have a set of alpha grids. So we have six alpha grids and we have seven numerical grids, which we can confirm. So although in this case, actually our V and our H is inverted, I believe. So we have seven letters. Actually, no, we have six letters and we have seven numbers. So that's correct. It's just the semantics of vertical versus horizontal is confusing me. Okay, you could call them upgrids and across grids. Um, that might be easier. So I keep keep zooming away from my script. I think my mouse is a bit happy tonight. Cool. All right, so what we need to do now is merge these results together. Um, so we're going to take uh, grid lines for a horizontal and also for a vertical. So we'll just use a merge list in order to put these together. So I'm going to take my seven grids here and my six grids here. And I'm going to flatten the output. And likewise, I'll also merge my names as well so that we have equal lists. Okay, so we should have seven and six. Cool. Seven and six. And we'll flatten the output here as well. So what I like to use, um, as you might have seen in past videos for Rhino Inside, is a stream filter so that you can stop the data from flying until you're ready for it to. So what I'll do is use stream filter and I'll get a button and I'm going to connect the button up to the gate boolean and I'll only feed through one of these on a conditional basis so when this is set to false the stream is set to zero and stream one is when it's true so when I click this button you can see temporarily that stream one will be fed through so this is how you can send through data once only so I'll just take uh, in this case the uh, the lines or the curves as stream one and when I press this, it sends through the geometry. So I'll just call this uh, create create grids. Okay, so this button will essentially feed through my grid curves. So I can take my grid curve, line it up here, take my names, and now we need to get a grid type. So, so far the only way I've found you can do this is by actually creating just one grid in your project, selecting it and extracting its type. Um, there must definitely be a better way to do this. I just haven't found it yet. So feel free to leave it down below if you know a, a good workflow that you can use to achieve this part. So I'll just go back to a floor plan and create a, a dummy grid. So make sure that I guess you give it a, um, a number that isn't going to be used up by your function. So in my case, I'll just give it a placeholder number. So I'll just create a grid. And I'll just give this the number uh, or the name temp. All right. I think I actually need to go back to that that view. Um, I'll just quickly recreate a floor plan. I've turned off my project browser, so it's a bit harder to get around the project. I need a bit of real estate. Oh, got a cat coming up. All right. So I'll just go back to uh, Rhino inside. So I'll just go back to my Rhino tab. Back to Grasshopper. All right. I've got a cat. <laughs> and what we're going to need to do now is we're going to select a, a grid. So I believe this is under Revit. Uh, mm, I don't think it's under there actually. I think it's under the main tab over here. And we'll just get the grid and we'll right click and go set one Revit grid. And just pick that dummy grid that you're going to extract the type from. And what we need to do now is go into Revit and we'll go to element and we'll get its identity. And from that, we can get the type. <laughs> so now we have a grid type available to set our grids to the same type as. So that should give us, yep, that gives us our grid type. I haven't found a good way to get the grid type yet otherwise. Sorry, cut attack. So what we'll do is feed that into our type node. And at this point, we can actually create our grids essentially. So what I'll do is just move this over. I'll just minimize that so we can actually see what we're doing and let's just run our script at this point so i'll just press run and there you go there's our grids in revit so run has essentially managed to create that and whilst you're still running this script uh, it will remember what the grids are so you can actually go back and change the settings of your grid so i can say now i want to reduce the grid spacing i'll reduce it again change the count change the count and we'll just rerun the script 
And whilst you're in that session at the same time, you should be able to run it again and reestablish your grids. And there you go. Um, you can see the problem is that it actually starts using up numbers. Um, so it will actually run out of numbers and letters that can give your grids. Um, so that's the only weakness to that workflow. But otherwise, the first time you create it, you can see that the, the letters and the numbers work. Um, but just be really careful, obviously, when you're recreating the grids that it won't always work. So some of it's better to undo if you need to create those grids again or delete them and then rerun your script. But this is really just to establish like a model um, coming out of Rhino. If you've got curves already in Rhino that represent your grids, um, all the better. You can just select those and push them through instead. But I thought this is a handy workflow for people that want to establish a script that can create a set of grids. Um, so the last thing we'll do is we'll set up a mechanism by which we can create columns at all the grid intersections, which I think is quite quite an important script. Um, so I'll just go and get rid of these grids and just rerun. Uh, they always come in pinned by default out of Rhino. So I'll create my grids again, and we'll just go and set up a method by which to get the intersections of all our grid curves. So I'll get a merge list to put all my curves into one big list. Okay, where's my curves? So I need to get my grid curves back here. Cool, and then I'll flatten this list. And what we need to feed this into um, under the intersection list is a, a multiple curve intersection. So we're going to take all these curves and we're going to get all the intersection points. Um, I can just run a quick circle normal radius in order to see where these are occurring. So we'll go at a center and we'll just get a radius of a thousand. Whoops. There we go. And now you can see it's found all the intersection points off those grids. Um, so now we have a mechanism by which we can identify a point uh, to place a column at using Revit. Um, so what we're going to do again is set up another stream filter because we want this to be like a second part of the script when we run it. So I'll just feed through the points on stream one and again get a button. Let's call this uh, create columns. And now we need to get a family to set our columns to because we're going to do a family by instance and point. So I believe that if we look up Revit family instance, add family instance by location, we need locations, which we have, which are our points. We need a column type and we also need a level and a host. We're going to graft um, this so that we can feed in multiple levels to place columns on more than one level at once. So what we'll do is get our model category under input uh, model category picker and we'll pick structural columns. So I'll just scroll all the way down, get structural columns and I'll get a type picker. Again, under input um, element type by name and we'll just feed through structural columns. And there you go. So this should let you pick any type of that category currently loaded into your project. And we'll make this uh, column type that we're using. And in this case, we'll get a, a level a level picker from input. And at the moment, we've just got two levels. So we'll just, we'll set both levels because it's going to place them at ground floor and level one. We could set up another area to set the parameters of the height or the level above. I'm just going to save a bit of time and pass on that one because we'll look at that in a future tutorial. Um, but if we run this, we should essentially get grids on both levels at the grid intersections because we've grafted our list. So if I run this, we should expect to get columns. And there you go. Now we've got columns placed at the intersections. And you can see we've got two sets essentially, one at, one at ground floor, one at level one. Um, so there you go. That's just a really quick way you can establish um, a grid out of your Rhino model um, or just straight out of Grasshopper if you're just looking for a quick way. And this is pretty rec uh, replicable in Dynamo as well if you want to. Um, so there you go. Um, so in the next part, we're going to be looking at how to create Revit levels. And then we're going to be looking at how to use those levels to bisect a Rhino mass in order to create floors from our mass at those levels. So we're sort of setting up a three-part workflow. 
Um, later on, we'll look at a way to generate columns within that mass um, on the floors at those levels uh, to set up a, essentially a mass to a Revit workflow, which is a, quite a common thing you need to do between the two programs. So hopefully that was useful. Um, thanks for bearing with me. I know that the workflow is a little bit slow and complicated, um, but hopefully that make, makes sense. Um, the next video is going to be a lot more simple. The levels workflow is quite easy. Uh, this one's a little bit more complicated because you need to actually create some geometry. Um, but if you've got any questions or queries, feel free to leave them down below or just any requests on topics you want to see covered for Rhino Inside. I'm really enjoying using the program. I'm quite impressed by what it can do. Um, and I look forward to sharing more about it in future. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.